Oh God. Oh God, it's very hot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, this is Benny and this is Dhruv and today we are going to review the trailer of the 2019 Nigerian movie called The Bling Lagosians or Lag Lagosians. If I read about it, it says this movie explores the privileges and downsides of being a, an imprudent wealthy man in Nigeria. It brings to fore the hidden struggles of members of the country's ruling class. Also, it evokes a gripping, a gripping sense of realism that makes for a unique cinematic experience. It is directed by Bolanle Austin Peters. It stars Bunmi Aboderin, Toin Abraham, Osas Daro. Um, Alex Ikubo, Ayula Ayolola, <laughs> and Jide Kasoko. Wow, that was very, very hard work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and of course, there's uh, there's many others. If, uh, there's also a summary on IMDb. This is a little bit of a longer summary, but it says, as each member of the Holloway family work to solve their problems, they prepare for Mopelola's party clearly to become the year's biggest society event. But the buzz about the party compels the asset management corporation to foreclose on St. Eve's, the family business. After the death of his godfather, Baba Eko, who had been protecting Akin Holloway, he must then fight a bigger battle, getting Mopelola to cancel her party and maintain a low profile to get them off the radar while he tries to save the business. This is very mm -hmm. cool. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's check this out. Wait, mommy is throwing a birthday party this year? <laughs> I'm thinking Nigerian paradise. Oh, and you, my beautiful goddess, will be Yemoja coral everywhere. I like that. Your 50 costs one million dollars. Mm-hmm. That means your 51st will be higher. Well, naturally. <sighs> Flowers from where the garden in heaven. You know what you've been up to with money. Do you know these people that you are talking about? These are juggernauts of the East. Not for this movie. But this is their kind of movie now. Powerful epic. No. Oh, so you and the children planned this in order to twist my arm so that I won't have my 51st birthday. Is that what it no. is? You're just plain book. I beg your pardon. I bought Googie. Googie? Mm -hmm. Yes, I bought Bobberry. Mm -hmm. This one does. We just did mad shopping. Mm -hmm. Did you follow me? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, interesting. I think the first thing it actually reminded me of was Dil Dharakne Do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because there's like, just like celebrities, these many, these high profile rich families, they have to maintain a persona because it's not just like about pretense. I think it's also about like, your, it's your business image as well. So you have to maintain a certain image, but there might be integral problems that are going on that you cannot show to others because it might affect your business. And you yourself as a person are a brand, right? It's you as a person are a brand. It's, it's as crazy as that. So you have to be perfect, you know? Uh, and, and the other thing I noted here is 
one of the ladies whose 54th first birthday they were going to celebrate her accent was very british so oh, I true. Wonder, yeah right so i wonder what her background is and if she's different from others like that was very interesting to me true um i was blown away by the color the clothes oh my god i that's the first thing i have to say i love the way they dress amazing <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i that i mean is like always the case i mean i feel like that's not that's not even exclusive to the stories we have seen obviously we haven't been to nigeria and seen the real life there but i feel like from even if there is an economic divide like people are always very well dressed and their clothing is amazing nigerian clothing is unbelievable so that across the board i think is fantastic now there for ooh, for so, someone from the us or canada if they go to india they would feel the same but we know as indians that the material of clothing is different depending on whether you're rich or not but it's still at the end all of it is colorful right so there might be those differences in their clothes mm. as well true um, and you know uh, the one who's who's birthday it was uh, it seems she is the wife of the rich guy who is facing the trouble or maybe she's the mother you know the beginning uh, dialogue is this mother is throwing a party so maybe she is the mother or and uh, the thing is once you are used to a very you know luxurious lifestyle where you have to maintain a high status you need to you know put uh, yourself in a certain way then i mean you get used to it and then uh, you don't i mean if if you're the woman who doesn't really get involved in the business you're not really aware of the ups and downs and you have had this kind of a lifestyle forever so now you want it and it you sometimes don't real i mean at the age of 51 right i mean half your life you have already spent like this and now you are like okay business has its ups and downs why can't i have my 51st birthday you know uh, that's a that's a stage when a person is already a bit stubborn because you're 50 already and you have had that lifestyle always so it's difficult to explain to a person like that that okay you know notch it down a little bit it's not possible right now but no <laughs> yeah and the other other factors there is like the husband might have always pampered her a lot so you know and he would have <clears throat> faced all the hardships on his own so she as you said might not understand that is this a bigger hardship or not and hardships have happened with you before why is this different the second aspect to it is she's also competing with her friends and it's a game and she cannot you know it's it's a constant game and it probably has been so for years you know where they're talking about oh i bought this oh really you bought this i bought an even more expensive brand you gookie. know yeah gookie 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 <laughs> burburi and gookie <laughs> so you know like it like she can't take her head out of the game it it's almost addictive in a way it kind of like is is a uh, trading in stocks or gambling or whatever it is a game at the end of the day in your head and you don't even realize that very true true so true <laughs> and what blew my mind actually was that he said your dress your dress costed 1 million dollars not even mm. not even a uh, nigerian currency he was talking about 1 million dollars i so, missed that i didn't get that oh my god 1 million dollars yeah so What this is like this is like a very very one of the the story is definitely based on one of the richest families in in nigeria i would think that it's it would be so much fun to be rich in nigeria yeah. <laughs> even in india like to be a very rich person in a developing country oh my god there's just so much more freedom right like yes and you have god status you have god status yes i think so there they showed 
I wonder what that was, right? There were this, uh, I think all the service people who were worshiping to God and this, this guy was saying someone's name, right? And I think he was talking about, he was saying the rich person's name. I could be wrong, but I think that was the case. Just how in the US people almost like worshiped Steve Jobs, almost worshiped him. And of course, yes, he, is a, he was a visionary, right? And there are many other visionaries, but it blows my mind that someone would worship a person. <laughs> you can look up to a person, you can be inspired by someone, but to have God-like status in someone's mind is very, very, I can't relate to it, but that's very interesting to me. I'm not going to say it's wrong or right, but I would, I don't relate to that, no matter what, <laughs> at the end of human being, but that does happen. And, and in, in countries where there are bigger economic divides, right, like India or Nigeria or Mexico, like, it's so far-fetched. It's uh, like that kind, those kind of riches are so fast, far-fetched, it feels like it's another planet. True. So it is kind of like if, if we came to know there are these creatures on this planet, we would be fascinated by them. We would be reading about them. We would try to know more about them, you know. It won't be just another person. It would be like, ooh, like it, you would have all the curiosity in the world and you some people might even worship, start worship them, worshiping them. Like, you know, how in Independence Day, the aliens were coming and people were like, Oh, take me with you. Like, what? Yeah. It makes sense to us, but maybe there is some thought process there that we don't understand, you know? Everyone's situation is different. So you're right. It, in, in these cases, it is godlike status. True. <laughs> there was some instance where I think it was her daughter who was in a film or something or was ca being casted for something i don't know like that also like shows you how uh, richer families have a little bit of an easier way uh, oh yeah leeway into very very tough industries where other people might not i mean there's like it's not their fault that they have it easier it's just how the world kind of operates i mean should it operate that way i don't think so but it, that's how it is if you, if you have all the access circumstantially to ice cream, would you not take it? Like I oh, would. Yay. Oh, yay. <laughs> but I feel, see, in the end, uh, even that debate is upon the, I mean, you get an easy access, you get an easy entry, and mm -hmm. you get an easy break. But then whether you make it or not is completely upon your hard work and talent. Even yeah, but, but argument there is also that you are prepped and packaged and like you get so, it's not just a break, it's like you're given everything for success. And even if you don't make it in the first go, you get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine breaks. Yeah. Whereas, <laughs> other people have just one break maybe two True. and True. that's about it you know so that then <laughs> if after those 10 breaks also if you're not able to make it then what a disaster <laughs> yeah. right. that is something horrendous i don't know if I would yeah, I, I, like I would 10 breaks and i would not be able to make it then i don't know if i would face myself in the mirror <laughs> right there are examples like that out there without naming anyone but uh, yeah so I mean and the other thing that I noted in the movie was like the husband was like this woman will not ruin me <laughs> like he has to be extra strong because he doesn't have he ha doesn't have a partner he has kind of he he kind of has a child you know oh, yes. imagine what that is like for him it's not easy at all. It's like keeping this persona, but also trying to keep a low profile while maintaining a business and then handling a brat of a wife and oh. probably 
three brat children. Like I cannot imagine the kind of pressure that man lives with. I mean, anyone with a multi-million dollar business has a lot of pressure. No one really talks about it. They talk about how glamorous it is. But if you watch a series like Silicon Valley, you understand how like some people say, oh, why did this person sell their business? They should have just opened their own company. It's so difficult to do that. There's so, so many obstacles. And I'm glad that that series talks about it because it's not easy. You need extra, extra, extra mental strength and ability to thrive under pressure. And it is no joke. So for me, I have a lot of respect for people who can maintain such multi-million dollar businesses. They are superhumans to me. You know, fact of the matter is that everything is hard, you know? Uh, being poor is hard, but being rich is as hard. It's a different thing. It's completely a different level, but it's not easy. It is not at all easy. Even if you're given, you know, a kingdom for free. Okay, your father may have built a kingdom and now you're the crown prince, you can have it all. But having it all and maintaining that or leave alone upgrading it, just maintaining that is also such hard work. Nothing's come, nothing comes easy in life. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Right, so th that kind of reminds me of how like in, this is kind of historical, right? But when, Idi Amin came to power. Uh, he, uh, you know, he had some, because of some political issues, he banished all the Indians who were there, right? And so they had to leave all their businesses. They were all successful businesses. It was thriving and they had to leave all the businesses. And then the locals took over the businesses and they couldn't maintain them. And then that decision backfired because the economy crumbled. The thing is like, if something is given to you on a platter, doesn't mean that it will sustain. You gotta have the strength, the mental strength, the skills, the smartness, the, the experience, the theory and practical, all of it. To the study of it. Yes, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like a, being, a, being in grad school, it's almost like monkhood. You have to earn it, you have to really work hard towards it. So I would bet that if that guy say died, right? And her and his business went to his wife. It would crumble in a in. Oh yes! Oh yes! True. Yeah. That is actually mostly evident. I mean, I don't know what her business skills would be like, but if she's a brat, the way she looks like to me, then definitely the business is down. <laughs> and, and you can see, like when he was explaining to her, her expression was like, "What?" She yeah. Could it was a very authentically confused expression because she was like, why is this a problem? I don't get it. Yeah. Like yeah. it innocent in that, like she doesn't know what's happening. It's not her fault at all. So, yeah. you know, it's a, you see all different kinds of characters. It's like elevated when we are talking about very extremely rich people. It's just very interesting. True. All right, guys, so if you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and actually go ahead and give us a thumbs up and hit that bell icon so that you are notified every time we upload a new video. We do that weekly on Mondays. Also, leave us a comment to let us know how we are doing or if there is anything else you want us to review. Until next time, Firmilinge. Firmilinge.